Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. Man, we got some heat from our friends at Ford. Come on, Kev, what'd you bring yeah. us? 600 horsepower what? of twin turbo, full Daytona prototype action right here in wow. the studio for us to check out and you guys to hang out with us. Man, 600 horsepower, we're gonna dive full bore into it. Stick around, this is gonna be fun. Okay, Kev, now you gotta explain this motor. It looks sweet, but what it come out of? What is it? Does it go in a side-by-side? -side? Looks like something you could put on a motorcycle, man. Explain a little bit. Well, as we said, man, this is 600 horsepower, power pack and 3.5 liter twin turbo <laughs> right out of the Tudor United Sports Car Championship Series. Okay. Now this series united yeah. American Le Mans with Grand Am, so it's the most power pack yeah. racing known to man. Hey, there's two classes that run in that, if I remember. The prototype, which are the 190 mile an hour, 600 horsepower guys, that it, they look like spaceships out there, right? And then you got production-based cars, so the Ferraris, the... And they're gonna test aerodynamics, suspension, chassis, along with the motor, but the prototypes, this guy, that's what this came out of, right? Yeah, so this is the top class top engine right here. Now these guys are restricted, so they're running 600 horsepower through restrictors, which is what really makes it cool. Now it's yeah, all man. about the technology in this thing, which makes it so amazing. Now, when we were pushing it over here, I saw something that just, it just, it made me uncomfortable. One, two, three, what's missing, man? <laughs> Maybe it's a cylinder two or cylinders. two. Yeah, but you know what? You're missing two cylinders. I make that up with two turbos <laughs> yeah. and direct injection. Right, and a whole bunch of technology that's inside this thing, which is amazing. Like I said, to make that much power, still being restricted. Yeah, man, and still coming from a production-based model. So it's cool sitting here, it's kind of docile, it looks good, but it's like candy that you can't taste. You actually got to see this thing run on the dyno? Yeah. Man, come on. Yeah, so we got this from Roush Yates Ford Racing, so we could show you guys the outside. This is the 2014. Now, mm. I got to go on to Ford Racing in their dyno, right in the middle of Dearborn, Michigan, headquarters of Ford, to see the 2015 stuff being developed for next season. Yeah, man. And if you're really good and you stay right where you're at, we're gonna show you those dyno runs and the numbers it put down next. You lucky dog, man. <laughs> this segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by MyClassicGarage.com, the online destination for classic car enthusiasts. Hey, welcome back. As promised, we're right here in the middle of Ford land. We've got world headquarters over here. We've got all of product development across the street. We've got the research building, the test track. It's all right here, and we are smack in the middle of the Ford Dino facility. This place is huge, and I've got a new best friend. This is Dave Simon from Ford Racing. He runs all of the Ford Racing sort of engine development programs. You know, I am so stoked to be in here, and I know these guys are too. Kevin, we're thrilled to have you with us. So in this building, we develop all of our North American powertrains from four cylinders up to our big diesels, but also our racing engines. Ooh. And we've got one of our EcoBoost racing engines ready to run today. Running right now? Yes, running right now. Heck yeah, come on guys, we're going fast. Well, Kevin, welcome to Cell 17G. This yeah. is where we do all of our race engine development. We work with our partners down at Roush Yates. We do some development work up here. They do some development work down here, but this dyno is specifically designed to do vehicle simulation. It's high dynamic, low inertia. We can simulate actual in-car conditions on this dyno. So the engine doesn't know whether if it's in a car or on a dyno when it's running. Just put the blinders on and it just just go. Doesn't know the difference. We originally commissioned this cell back in the 90s. We've done Formula One development, IndyCar development, NASCAR development, and now our sports car programs in this very cell. All right, so I, I see, you know, you've got some race stock type stuff on here, but, you know, if I look down close, I can see serial numbers and full MoCo labels on like cylinder heads and blocks. How much of this thing is really a production engine or just full on race? That's the really cool part about this engine program is 70% of this engine is stock. So it's based on uh, same engine that's in a Taurus show or Ford Flex EcoBoost. So 
a lot of the stuff that we've changed on this engine is just to package it into the race car. So the cool part about it is when we run it, we're actually gaining data on the stock production components. We share that information with the production engineers. They share their information back with us. So it's a, it's a kind of program that a lot of parts of Ford Motor Company will benefit from, and it makes it a, a really fun program to work on. If this thing wasn't so warm and toasty, dude, I'd want to give it a hug. This <laughs> is awesome. Now, speaking of warm and toasty, you promised we were going to run this thing, and I want to hang out here, but I also want to hear it scream. Well, luckily, we're in the middle of doing 2015 development right now, and we're about to run some laps of Daytona, so we'll get it fired up and we'll run some laps. I'll set you up with Mike up at the control bench, and you can watch it run. We're going to watch this thing run. Man. All right, man. This guy right here, Mike Simon. This guy hey, how are you? is going to fire this thing up. Dave told me we could. Oh, yeah. Good. Let's do it. Let's launch it. Okay, now we're running Daytona. Uh, 24 hours of Daytona durability test, uh, testing all of our hardware on the engine. Full simulation, the gear full shifts, 24 hours. full 24 hours. Nice, so we're gonna be here for a while. We're gonna be here for a long time. What point of the track are we right now? Uh, we're going down the straightaway right now, but shifting gears. Uh, we're heading to the bus stop. Bus stop? Yeah, the bus stop. What's that? That's where the car turns left, goes a little straight, turns right, and it looks like a bus stop. Really, so you've got the tracks almost memorized just by the sound of the engine. I do, I've run Probably 12, 13,000 miles of Daytona here, so I'm not quite as good as Scott Pruitt, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting close simulation wise. Nice, very cool, man. So you've got a ton of durability on this engine, and I mean, it just keeps going and going because you guys are developing for the next season and yeah. the next season, just constantly improving. Man, I don't even know how you keep up with all the different gauges. I mean, obviously, you got other guys here monitoring this stuff, but incredible, man. I mean, so we've got tons of action out there that you've got to visually kind of watch to make sure hoses aren't blowing off, there's no oil squirting anywhere, catching on fire, but then you've got all these things you're having to monitor at the same time. Yeah, all the vitals going on here are looking at everything, pressures, temperatures, uh, speeds, turbine speeds, uh, everything. It takes more than one set of eyes to keep track of all this, that's for sure. And this is no little like home-cooked dyno cell right here, man. This no. is the 17G legendary dyno cell, man. Wow. No, it's awesome. I can't believe I get paid to do this, but hey, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm up for sticking around for the 24 hours because this is awesome. Let's, are you getting lunch? I'm Let's, ordering it in. <laughs> oh, sounds good to me. <laughs> Very cool. But hey guys, this is awesome stuff and I'm going to hang out for a while, but we got a lot to show you back in the shop. So stay tuned. We'll see you there. Now, as you've seen today, vehicles are getting much more complex. Have you jumped in a car lately? Have you seen things like the integrated computer system, heads-up display, not to mention all the sophisticated machinery underneath the car, and of course, the implement of the digital dash. So the big question is, how do you keep up with it? Or more important, how do you know your shop or technicians are keeping up with it? Now, this is one of the reasons you always have people refer to an ASC certified shop or an ASC certified technician. Now, ASC certification requires that technician to go back and keep up to date with the change of technology in the automotive industry. Now, ASC stands for National Institute of Automotive Service Excellence. It's an independent, nonprofit organization that's really been around since 1972. ASC works works to improve the quality of vehicle service and repair by testing and certifying automotive professionals. Research shows that ASC certified technicians tend to be more thorough and efficient, and they also tend to earn higher customer satisfaction ratings, which is why it's something you want to look for when you're choosing a repair facility. ASC certification is a voluntary program, and today there are more than 300,000 automotive technicians and other service professionals that hold an ASC certification, and you'll find them working in every part of the automotive service industry, from service base to part counters nationwide. Now, technicians who pass at least one exam and fulfill the work experience requirement become ASC certified. Those who pass all required tests in a series earn a master technician status. That's the best of the best. To stay ASC certified, technicians must retest every five years to show that they're keeping up with advancing automotive technology. ASC certification helps both the customers and shop owners to really identify a technician's qualifications and level of expertise. Now, repair shops with at least one ASC technician can display an ASC sign. 
and most places will post credentials in their waiting area for customers to see. Each ASC professional is issued shoulder insignia along with personalized credentials listing his or her exact area of certification. So when you take your car into a shop, you may want to ask for a technician who's certified in a specific area. That way you know you're going to get the best possible service for your car. This ASC information brought to you by Federated Auto Parts. Man, that dino room, that, that had to be incredible, bro. Oh, it was unbelievable. And I got a whole lot of stuff by hanging out for the whole day over Well, there. I mean, obviously you see some long tube headers, some bigger turbos on this guy, but the cool thing that he iterated in that video was that 70% of the ingredients in this guy lives in this guy right here. Now here's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost. They merge eco-friendly and turbo boost to create this platform. And because the United States Congress put all these cafe rules in that said mile per gallon is king, they had to really look at this kind of technology. How do you get miles per gallon, but yet have a lot of power, turbo technology, variable camshafts, and all about direct injection. Yeah, so that guy might be making 600 mm. going around a racetrack for 24 hours. This thing's making 420 foot pounds. That's unbelievable. That's 300, yeah, 365 horsepower for 150,000 miles plus. It's tight, man. Now we're going to get in because right out of the gate, I see the fuel pump. The old lift pump would get it to here, but this guy took it from like 60 pounds to 2,100 pounds, right? Yeah, you got to get the high fuel pressures, the good atomization the quick spray, but we're going to show you more of all that mm. by digging into this thing so we can kind of see what's in there and in here at the same time. Love it. You can see we're making some good progress. We've got some covers off. You can start seeing some stuff. We got the cams going on. Yeah. We got this wild cam drive up here. We can see in the ports. Yeah, man. Really cool to see some of this stuff exposed and open, like these cam phasers and the oil solenoids that drive those things. Now these things rotate the camshafts according to the crank angle, right? So you could advance or retard the camshafts depending on where you want it. Yeah, while you're injecting, while you're boosting, like while you're sparking, it's just amazing all this stuff comes together as a technology bundle. Now, we're gonna drive deeper into this thing, so we're gonna pull the cam drive off, pop the head off so we can really see the injectors, that combustion system, yeah, all the magic of the inside. All right, it came off pretty nice and simple. Check now, that out. this is EcoBoost. Now, we've got an intake manifold, short runners, because you don't need the tuning, because you got a turbo for yeah. boost and power. Something missing out of that. <laughs> yeah, no injectors, <laughs> right? So we'll get to that. You saw the turbo, you saw the high pressure fuel pump. Now that's gonna bolt right onto here, feed in this right. rail. Now that's high pressure fuel rail is gonna feed these injectors right here, right in the middle of the combustion chamber. to have an exact amount of fuel that it's called for. Yeah, now what's cool is it's a lot like PFI, but it's higher pressures, right. it's better atomization, but it's happening downstream. Now, that's a good question. Why is direct injection, because there's a lot of arguments, better than PFI? Well, the big thing about DI is, is charge cooling. So when you yeah. vaporize anything, like put alcohol on your skin, you can sure. feel it it's cooling, fuels the same way. But when you inject upstream into the port, it's nice, you inject and you hit the back side of the valve, you got more of a clunky fuel spray but you're also pulling in heat. Sure. So now you're taking that charge cooling, you're warming it back up. Yep. But if I can do it downstream, yeah. right, and I don't yeah. hit those hot surfaces upstream, I get a cooler, denser charge, I get better cylinder filling. Better efficiency. Yep, less knock so I can run more compression yep. for better fuel economy. So it's like a win, win, win. There you go, man. Yeah. Now you got some cool videos I saw you showing me from Ford. Can you enlighten everybody else? Yeah. Great stuff, man. All right, get ready to melt your brain a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we know the benefits of DI now, but yeah. there's also some challenges, right? Okay. So first of all, look at our crank angle, our 360, because you can't inject until the piston's out of the way, A right? lot less time here with DI. Yep, so this is after top dead center, we're starting the intake stroke, now we can start hitting some fuel, there right? You go. But this math model actually includes calculations of the temperature of each molecule of fuel, the temperature of surfaces that it's and hitting. what's going on here? Because you gotta figure out if you're gonna be if you touch a hot surface, if you're vaporizing or if you're puddling. And you can't puddle in a DI because you'll get an incomplete burn, you'll get soot, soot formations. Right? Yep. So this math model is so important because the injection time is so tight. You can't do any puddling like you do upstream, sure. right? It's so much more complicated. That's why you need tools like this. And then the end product is this guy right here 
This is a two liter GTDI wow. and you're in the piston looking up, right? Yeah, there you go. Spraying some of the fuel. Yeah. Right? Now you're going to see some of the valves closing. Yeah, there they go. And a little more compression. A little squeeze and then let's light it off. Yeah, baby. There it is. Push. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> so that's the end result Whew. from all that analytical work, hey. all that testing. And when we're not done yet, when we come back, we're going to dive back into this EcoBoost, tell you a little bit more about the block, a little bit more about the piston, and how this thing's changing the game. What's the easiest way to clean the intake valves on my GDI engine? GDI engine intake valves are prone to deposit buildup because they never get washed with fuel. Now there's an easy way to clean your GDI intake valves without having to disassemble the top of the engine. Use CRC GDI IVD intake valve cleaner. To use it, start the engine and get it up to operating temperature. Locate the mass airflow sensor and use the attached permastraw to insert the product past the mass sensor directly into the air intake. This will help you avoid throwing any codes. CRC intake valve cleaner reaches the back of the valves at 150 times the concentration of any premium fuel additive and is proven to remove up to 23% of carbon buildup in just the first hour. This tip is brought to you by CRC Industries, makers of Brake Clean, the number one brake parts cleaner. This is the Pro 2 Series cabinet from Moduline Cabinets. You've seen these on Two Guys Garage before. We love having them in the shop because they're durable and they look great. They're American made with premium aluminum, the best material for a garage because they resist corrosion and their designer appearance will easily enhance the look of your garage or trailer. What's really convenient about these cabinets is the quick draw latch system. It allows you to open and close a drawer with just one finger. So even with your hands full, you can get into the cabinets. And these latches keep the drawer securely latched, even in transit. Not only that, but the quick draw system actually takes up less drawer space. These cabinets may not be the least expensive on the market, but they have some of the best overall value. Moduline cabinets are built to last and they come with a lifetime warranty. This is the Paint Education DVD series by Kevin Tetz. Now, if you're like a lot of guys, you probably love to do a project without using the directions. The instruction manual is usually the first thing to go in the garbage. But when it comes to paint and auto body work, having the right knowledge can save you a lot of time and money. Paint Education instructional DVDs can guide you through a variety of projects with easy to understand instructions. It's like having your own personal auto body and restoration coach. Kevin Tetz has 30 years of experience that he uses to share his techniques on everything from basic body work to fiberglass repair. Instead of paying someone else to paint or restore your car, give this award-winning series a try. Each DVD has step-by-step -step tips so you can watch and learn as you go. Start with the one you need for your next project or get the whole set, which now includes a new fiberglass repair DVD. Classic Parts of America is what you need for your 1947 to 1998 Chevy full-size truck projects. Whatever it is you're looking for, you can find it in one of these free Classic Parts catalogs for Chevy trucks. They're broken out by model year, making it easy for you to narrow down your search. And they're all in color, so you can see exactly what you're getting. Take a look at these running board step plates for the 1947 to 54 truck models. They're highly polished aluminum with diamond pattern treads that's going to look great while protecting your running boards from wear and tear. The Ray Chevy logo in the center makes a great addition to your classic truck project. You can find these and thousands of other Chevy and GMC truck parts online. And best of all, Classic Parts of America is located in the Midwest, which means they're able to get most parts delivered to you in one to three business days with standard shipping. Now the crazy thing is, 70% of that race motor you'll find right here. The block, the heads, the same on this guy as it is on this one. Oh yeah man, right out of the manufacturing line, it goes to build up for the race engine and the truck, the MKS, the Flex, yeah. the Taurus Show, all well, the same stuff. It doesn't take long for you looking at this thing and you understand why. Look how thick these cylinder walls are, right? Yeah. Now you got the cooling slits here, mm -hmm. so you get water between the cylinders. You keep the hottest part cool. Right, Good. lots of durability stuff in there. Yeah, and just looking at the piston, man, I was able to check out a couple cool things. You see this friction material here, it's gonna protect the skirt of the piston and the cylinder walls. And right out of the gate, I saw this thick ring land, but yet if you get a real close look, you can see 
the dissimilar metals. What's going on right here, Kev? Yeah, so that's a ring carrier right out of a diesel engine, right? Because they have okay. such high firing pressures. You got turbos, lots of boost, right? So that adds structure to the piston and keeps that second land from snapping off, right? Man. So you got the strong metal exactly where you need it. You got the light metal everywhere else. There you go, man. And you guys have mapped every single molecule and what happens on the surface of this piston so you know you're getting extra strength and extra R&D for reliability. Now when we come back from break, we're talking reliability. 150 plus thousand miles, torture tests like you wouldn't believe. We're going to show you where this guy lives. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out MavTV.com or visit our website at TwoGuysGarage.com. Hey, welcome back to Two Guys Garage. Hope you learned something today about the Ford EcoBoost. We told you we were going to show you where it lives, and it's right here, a 2015 F-150. Yeah, it's not just any F-150. This is the brand new aluminum bodied F-150. This thing is almost 700 pounds lighter than the last year's model, depending on which configuration you get. And you yeah. know what that means. That means better fuel economy and more towing, man. You want to see a fantastic video, go Google 448AA. Now, it's just a random motor, an EcoBoost motor. They pulled off the assembly line and put it through the most unreal, rigorous test. You're just thinking the thing is going to but it doesn't. Man, unreal. I'm telling you. The technology in the engine is just trying to keep up with the technology going in this body. Because yeah. you can't just go weld on aluminum like you do with steel. Mm -hmm. So it's new bonding, it's new rivets, new fasteners, right? It's a whole lot of wow factor going on right here. You yeah. guys got to go check them out. Yeah, speaking of wow factor, I'm behind the wheel. He's in the passenger seat. We're out of time. It's time to go driving now, man. Real quick, right out of the gate, I'll show you how this thing spools up. All right, check out this turbo. Listen, I like it. I love it, man. Hey, man, did you get the door? No, I'm driving. You got to get the door. Two Guys Garage is brought to you in part by Federated Auto Parts. Best parts, best people, best service. Vehicle transportation provided by Pilot Transport. Auto hauling specialists. Professional POV cameras provided by Replay. Record, replay.